Good night. Good evening. Let's call to order this meeting of the County Board of Champaign County. It's Thursday, April 22nd, 2010. The time is 7.01. Roll call, please. Nudo. Here. O'Connor. Here. Richards. Here. Rosales. Here. Sapp. Here. Schrader. Smucker. Waisaki. Here. Ammons. Here. Anderson. Here. Beckett. Here. Denzel. Here. Betts. Here. Carter. Coart. Ms. Coart is here. She walked out of the room. Dennett's. Here. Gladney. Present. James. Here. Jay. Here. Jones. Here. Knott. Here. Kurtz. Here. Langenheim. Here. McGinty. Here. Michaels. Here. Mosier. Here. And Weibel. Here. Mr. Schrader just walked into the room. I'll uh, point out that Mr. Carter has a medical excuse for the evening. We have a quorum. Tonight's prayer. Uh, Mr. Smucker just arrived too. Tonight's prayer is a runner's prayer since on May 1st is the Champagne Marathon and I'm sure a number of you are going to participate in that. God, give me courage to run the race. Help me to persevere as you taught us. Grant me the strength to finish strong. Honor me with your presence on my journey. Allow me to be a great runner this day. O oh Lord, one more breath, one more step, one more mile. Finish line. This is my prayer. Amen. Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. Would the clerk read the notice of the meeting, please? Notice is hereby given that a regular meeting of the County Board, Champaign County, Illinois, will convene on April 22, 2010, 7 o'clock p.m., in the Lyle Shields Meeting Room, Brookings Administrative Center, 1776 East Washington Street, Urbana, Illinois, in said county for the purpose of allowing and ordering payment of claims against the county, receiving and acting upon reports of committees and such other matters as may be brought before said meeting, which said meeting shall continue in session from day to day until the completion of said business. Move approval. Move by Mr. Betts. Second. Second by Mr. Langenheim. Uh, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Seek approval of the agenda. So moved. Moved by Mr. Betts. Second. Second by Mr. James. Ms. Wysocki. Uh, yes, I'd like to ask that um, item seven under environment and land use be moved to the top of their agenda. No objection. Second. Um, any objection to that? Okay, any other changes? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Um, we need to have our next regular meeting uh, for the county boards Thursday, May 20th at 7 p.m. in this room for uh, the Committee of the Whole for Highway and Transportation Facilities and Environmental Land Use. It's Tuesday, May 4th at 6 p.m. in this room. And on Tuesday, May 11th at 6 p.m. is the Committee of the Whole for Finance, Personnel, Policy, Justice, and Social Services. Moving on to the consent agenda. Are there any items you wish to take off the agenda? I move the consent. Second. Moved by Mr. Betts, second by Mr. Beckett. Roll call. <coughs> Nudo? Yes. O'Connor? Yes. Richards? Yes. Rosales? Yes. Sapp? Yes. Schrader? Yes. Smucker? Yes. Wysocki? Yes. Ammons? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Beckett? Yes. Benzel? Yes. Betts? Yes. Coart? Yes. Dennett's? Yes. Gladney? Yes. James? Yes. Jay? Yes. Jones? Yes. Knott? Yes. Kurtz? Yes. Langenheim? Yes. McGinty? Yes. Michaels? Yes. Mosier? Yes. 
Weibel. Yes, motion carries. Public participation. Mr. Steve Kaiser. Uh, my name is Steve Kaiser. I am a um, private um, collector of Indian artifacts, and I would like to read you a summary report. And I have with me uh, a ring binder that I would like to pass out to all members of the county board, and they can see fit to review it or do whatever they want with it. Um, in 1978, I was made aware of the presence of Indian artifacts located at uh, sites number five and six on the map. At that time, uh, my college roommate and one other fellow student began recreational walks from the side of the road adjacent to these sites. We engaged in these walks for two years, especially in the spring and fall seasons when farming methods of deep plowing were being utilized. Our surface collected accumulation from those years is represented in the accompanying photos. These photos accurately represent about 40% of what was removed from these sites. This amount is in my personal possession. The other 60% is now in possession of a former roommate. Additionally, a large quantity of flakes, chips, broken points, and etc. were donated to the local archaeological survey. This area has a long history of industrial development relative to farming, agriculture, and has been radically modified from the periods of its nomadic occupation. The 19 sites that I have found and recorded with the Ar archaeological survey are similar in the following ways. Each is located on a stratigraphic exposed slope that declines in elevation towards the saline ditch along both sides where indicated on the site number. In many instances, artifacts were found scattered or located on top of the slopes or near the bottom of each slope site. Exceptions are where artifacts were scattered on top of a higher elevation away from the saline banks. Each site has a unique time period character relative to the photo content of each. This entire area was occupied as far back as 8000 BC and as late as 500 AD. The Olympian Drive project must take action with respect to this occupation because of the enormous likelihood of ceremonial artifacts, unknown location of ceremonial or burial locations. To not address this physical evidence is to denounce Champaign County's longest occupied and oldest settlement. I would leave you with this, and my credibility is neither poor, for or against. It's just something that I have recreated, and I have been quiet and, and recluse about it for many years, but now comes uh, a proposal where I specifically found ground collected sites where the road bed or the proposed road is going to go right through things. So I'm asking you and presenting to you today, what would you do if a road contractor uncovered a ceremonial site? What would happen? I have no idea. But um, given the fact that there are uh, artifacts from 75 to 9,000 BC in one of the spots up to the late archaic or Mississippi or woodland era, and if people were occupying that spot, which is, well, uh, there, there has to be something relative to more than just living there. There has to be death related to it also. So it could randomly get exposed in the development of the Olympian Drive. So who do I give this documentation to? Okay. Here's the map that has the sites marked. And here's a ring binder with a description and photos. And each group of photos is specified on that. Okay. And it's free of charge. If you have any questions about this, 
there are business cards inside the ring binder, call me. Mr. Vincent Hawk. What? No. I, I, have all, I have multiple copies of this. If you need more, I'll give you more. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Vincent Hawk. Thank you to the uh, Champaign County Board for allowing me to speak for f just a few seconds. Uh, Vincent F. Hawk, Jr., and my wife, Wanda, uh, we're uh, farmer-owned, operated uh, land south of uh, Fisher, off of County Road 600. Uh, and I've talked to my three members from District 1, so they're aware of my uh, uh, position on the LRMP, I just, my only concern with the LRMP uh, is the vagueness of, and I'm, I'm, I'm coming to this, I'm, I'm uh, basically quoting the summary as it appeared in the Gazette. We printed all, out all 500 and some odd pages of it the first go around. Uh, in the News Gazette, the summary uh, indicated that the uh, parceling the 40 and over 40, under 40 and over 40 acre. Uh, I don't object to the LRMP. I was, I was in it at the very beginning uh, when this first thing came up a few years ago. What I object to is vagueness. Uh, if you're going to quote uh, parcel use uh, per a specific uh, parcel, you ha make it specific. You can't say under 40 and over 40. That's not... That's not a legal description. It would, you could not plat on that kind of a decision. Uh, that's my only objection. You must be precise in your description of the parcel. It's either 40 acres exactly or over 40 acres. But you can't say over 40 acres. Is it between 40, 50, 60, 100? That's, that's our objection. It's not objecting necessarily to the... Uh, the nature or the intent of the LRMP, it's, the, we, uh, we really object to a board pre uh, presenting something to the public and that, uh, that, that's vague. Thank you for the time. Ms. Patsy Petrie. Good evening, Patsy Petrie, Champaign, Illinois. Uh, my comments are focusing on the land resource management plan, and my comments are in the spirit of uh, trying to enable the best possible policy plan to be passed by the uh, county board in the spirit of the health, safety, and welfare of the county. Uh, one of my first comments has to do with the RRO. There are two very uh, vague aspects to that uh, provision within the land resource management plan. One has to do with the definition of prime farmland. That can change over time. So if, that, if the basis for the RRO is going to be that definition, I urge that a date and time be placed in that document. So when and if the definition in the categorization of prime farmland changes, then there is a, a line in time when that definition stands within that document. The second has to do with the foundation for approving RROs is the uh, makeup of the county board, and the makeup of the county board changes over time, and that makes it very precarious decision making. And the last, the RRO, is spot zoning, and that has very weak legal legs to it, and that opens up all kinds of uh, problems. When this policy is passed, there will be a terrible gap between the policy and the present zoning ordinance. So I do encourage the county board to move forward very quickly on um, revising the present zoning ordinance so it is compatible with the policy or else or, again, very leak, weak legal la legs. And my last comment is the document is um, 
uh, very word heavy. It isn't very user friendly for our residents within the county. And I would encourage somehow that the document become less word dense and a little bit more um, illustration uh, with some uh, visuals in that document so people who read it can better understand the intent of the policies that are contained within the document. Thank you very much. Mr. Neil Malone. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, my name is Neil Malone. I am Governmental Affairs Director for the Champaign County Association of Realtors. Um, and I'm here today uh, kind of to add a bit of real estate and business perspective to the LRMP. Um, first, I would like to start by uh, applauding all of the, tr the tremendous amount of hard work that has gone into getting us to this point on the LRMP. And I, I really do appreciate uh, some of the most recent changes made to the LRMP with regard to how it would be used in terms of a framework uh, for, to, to guide some development decisions. Um, however, I, I cannot um, at this point uh, refrain from pointing out that in our sense, uh, in the real estate and development community, it would appear that um, our, LRM, our LRMP is, is incomplete. Uh, the, the lack of you know, substantial real estate input or substantial business input into some of these land use decisions, I think leaves it uh, an incomplete picture of you know, potential land uses in the county. Uh, additionally, I think the fact that it is uh, targeted toward using uh, census data and, and so on and so forth that could not be more out of date right now. With, it, with, it, with a census currently operating, I, I think it would be wiser to to delay this a little longer and get the most accurate data available, as well as uh, elicit some input from the from the development and and business community. Uh, one, I think that there are several areas where I think the community has done a great job in 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 getting to this point, and I think that our association, as well as uh, the the private property owners in the county. I think would support a lot of the incentive-based efforts, especially in the areas of, of improving transportation, uh, energy and uh, conservation, as well as natural and, and, and cultural resource uh, maximization. However, some of the land use areas, and in particular the, the prosperity side of this, I, I think really lacks uh, an input from the real estate community. Um, for example, uh, the use in the document of of granting highest and best use category always and in all, all, nearly all cases to commercial agriculture simply uh, isn't what the term i mean term, highest and best use is sort of a term term of art in the real estate community where it is it meant as an economic indicator it, it's not an aesthetic measure it's not a value driven or or um Judgment, judgmental sort of perspective. It indicates a highest economic use of land, and I think to to really limit a lot of the land use items in this to one particular land use, I think is presents an uneven uh, playing field for any other land user, as well as detracts from the, the rights of of the private property owner. So, thank you for your time and attention. Mr. George Boyd. Mr. Boyd? Uh, you, am I last? Uh, you're the last one right here. Good evening. Uh, I appreciate your time. Seven score and seven years ago, uh, one of Illinois' best known politicians, Abraham Lincoln, president, gave a talk at Gettysburg. And he talked uh, about the soldiers who had died there, but he also talked about other things. And that was whether the United States at that time was going to be able to continue to survive 
based upon the principles it was founded on, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Uh, we're talking about an issue today that, or I am, about Olympian drive. And I think that uh, this is going to injure a lot of people. It's going to cut into farmland. Uh, Mr. Uh, Kaiser mentioned the Indian artifacts in that area. Uh, so, at any rate, uh, the farmers in this area, in Champaign County, in 2008, which was the last year that there are complete records, uh, brought in 370 million 186 thousand net dollars to this community to Champaign County. Oh, thank you. Now I won't have to try and remember it. Uh, and that's a significant amount of money. Also, they employed 5,500 people approximately in the agriculture industry, which brings a lot of additional money in. So, in the entire state, Champaign County ranks fifth in production dollars in the entire state of Illinois as a county. A Champaign County blue ribbon panel on the environment issued a report six years ago saying that if we wanted to maintain uh, or sustain our environment, we needed to stop using farmland for highways, more buildings, and creating urban sprawl, and provide more park space and protect protection for native biological areas. Also, industrial growth can frequently lead to more downstream water pollution. When you put a road through a farm field and bisect it, you destroy the tile fields installed many years ago that transformed this once swamp land from wetlands to the richest farm ground in the world. The U of I was established as an agricultural college. It is still a leader in improving agricultural production. The planners keep talking about the rapid growth we are having. I have been told it would be 8 to 12 percent. They told me this six years ago. The records indicate that it is less than one half percent per year. While on telephone hold to the city of Champaign last week, they had a little commercial uh, while I was on hold saying that in the next five years, Champaign is expected to grow by 15 percent. This is truth in advertising, I guess. Many people have talked about how Urbana has recently created this wonderful Windsor Road. I've heard a number of speakers come up here and talk about how wonderful Windsor Road is. Windsor Road is more than 100 years old. Uh, and, and just as Ford Harris Road was on maps for more than 140 years, it's an existing road. Windsor has not has been improved and used many times. We need to put a bridge on Fort Harris, Ford Harris Road and Leverett Road. These are long established roads, as Windsor is. Further, there is no money, local, state, or federal, but the printing presses are still running and the debt grows. Uh, we're all pretty much bankrupt. If you had put away $1 in 1995, that's when this initial Olympian study was done, it would be worth 68 cents now. Uh, the estimated cost for the Curtis Road interchange is 60% over the projection. Olympian and Lincoln Avenue, if you include that, which they're talking about now, will end up costing probably more than $45 million, just based on Curtis. There are lots of empty buildings and plenty of room along Route 45, I-74, Lincoln Avenue, Philo Road, etc. In early March, a legion of representatives from Champaign County went to our capital to bring back the bacon. Looking through the list of those who went there on our behalf, I found five who were elected by the citizens and 13 who were not. 
This is not government of, by, and for the people. An online poll on February 24th found 1,188 opposed to this project and 416 in favor. Some said this was an unscientific poll. You, the members of the county board, can easily end this speculation by placing a referendum on the ballot so there is a clear scientific measure of support or dissent. I challenge you to do this. I am told by the county clerk that a simple vote by you, the county board, can add this to the ballot. If we, the people that are opposed to this, would try and do this, it would require 9,000 signatures. So you have the opportunity to put it on the ballot and we'll find out who's in favor and who isn't. Another serious issue is the Native American campsites that Mr. Kaiser described, thousands of years old. This may be one of the more valuable Native American artifact areas in the United States. Uh, if Market Street and Leverett Road were properly improved and rebuilt, which I don't believe has been done since 1942, when Route 45 became four lanes, previous to that it was two lanes and they added two more, that's when I think Market Street and Leverett Road were last uh, improved. So they're, they're way past that. Anyone driving on it can tell you that. The Leverett Road continues on through Royal, Illinois, to Route 49. It's not a short road. Uh, it also, Leverett has a grain elevator. People have talked about how difficult it is to get to Anderson's. Ford Harris is a through road that could be improved with a bridge over the railroad. The cost would be much less than forging a new road through existing farms and destroying agricultural income and the green and wildlife areas we presently have. Lincoln completed his address by stating that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom, and the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Represent the voters who elected you. Thank you. Mr. Boyd, after I called you up, another person submitted a forum, so you're not the last one, and I apologize for that. Well, that's okay. I thought he was going to talk, and that's why I was kind of surprised I was sitting beside him. So, but, but I, I think things so like that. So for our last, last speaker time. probably is Mr. Mark Thompson. Okay. Is Claudia Gross here? No. She's not on the board anymore? Well, I'm actually very happy about that because the last time she was here, I asked her about property rights, and she said she didn't believe in property rights because we stole this land from the Indians. Is there anybody here who agrees with that statement? Does everyone here believe in property rights? No show of hands. Are we afraid to say we believe in the right of the landowner to his property. Mr. Thompson, we're not allowed by our rules to interact with you, so you just have to speak. Oh, okay. So I can't ask you to send me all the money out of your wallets either, I suppose. Because in an effect, this legislation that is, uh, or policy that is being adopted is robbing landowners in this county to, a, to the tune of tens and tens and tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars over time. That's going to be the net effect. Unlike Vince, I do understand what's going on. I went to many of those LRMP meetings. I have my finger on the pulse. And there's a term called highly restrictive, which John Hall taught me early on. And he flat said, what we're trying to do is highly restrictive. And in my opinion, I told him the very first time I heard this, I was from Texas, and where I come from, they hang people for doing stuff like this back in the day. Because people believe in property rights in certain areas of the country. And what's being promoted here goes beyond anything to do with logical zoning. I couldn't agree more that there's a place for a land resource management plan. Absolutely. We need that. How many of you have read it? 
Do you have any clue? You've heard of the term um, unintended consequences? Well, I'm telling you in that 500 pages, there's a whole lot of intended consequences that are gonna be very painful for the people who own property in this county. And I'm talking about from one end to the other, top to bottom. It's egregious what is in this plan. And I'm gonna hit right, right where it really hurts most. This concept that you're gonna tell a landowner he can build or sell one two acre lot per 40 acres maximum four lots per landowner or was that just changed to two i'm not even sure i heard that it was actually reduced to two per parcel now what could be more egregious in america than telling a man who owns 100 acres or 200 acres or 300 acres that by the way you can sell two two acre parcels off that ground period the term for this is highly restrictive, it's unconstitutional, and it's un-American. It's insane that you even consider passing this. I stated from day one, this is insane, and you are going to tie this to the LRMP. The LRMP, like I said, there's a place for good conscientious zoning. We all know that, we all agree upon that. You have to control growth. But do you stifle every landowner in this county across the board, 1,500 or so people? To give you an example of what highly restrictive is, I own property out by Fisher and I saw the writing on the wall. So I had my land subdivided, two parcels, 96 acres. I now have seven lots I can sell off of that ground and I can make real money off that ground. And I'll make more when you guys pass this policy because my value will go sky high because the opportunity for people to move to the country will be diminished tremendously, supply and demand. But all these people who didn't see this coming, who have no clue, how many people here understand what I'm talking about? One parcel per 40 acres, two acres maximum lot size? That's insane. This place should have every single one of those landowners here. They don't know about this. It was in the paper and on the front page of the B section. You know, a couple phone calls to Penny for your thoughts. These people don't know what's hitting them. But as soon as you look at this and adopt it as policy, there, there is teeth behind that policy. Trust me, when jump, people come up into the zoning department and want to do things, they go, well, that's, that doesn't fit within our new policy, and we're going to restrict you now. It just maddens me when I think that you people aren't even telling, in fact, according to John Hall, they're not even going to put a flyer out to every landowner when this goes to the next level when they're going to try to pass this entire management plan. People won't even know what's happening. And I come from that background because I own some property I went to sell. When I bought it, I could have sold four or five acre lots. By the time it was done, I spent almost a year in this zoning process, and they allowed me to sell it to one person, and I couldn't even keep 10 acres of that 20 acres. I wouldn't even been able to subdivide it to keep it because the rules have changed so much. Right now, we have rules that are in place when it comes to maximum lot size, minimum lot size, that are already restrictive. To take it to this next level is absolutely insane and un-American. And any one of you who recited the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag and to the republic for which that flag stands, and the republic is based on this concept that we have inalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of property, people. This whole property thing is real. And when you vote against or for this tonight, it will be on record. I assume we take a record of everyone's individual votes. And personally, I think it's about the worst thing you can do if you consider how vast a number of people who live outside of the city limits and how it's going to affect the value of their ground. Thank you. And yet we've had another entrance. The last, last speaker, Mr. Eric Thorsland. I'm Eric Thorsland, and I'd like to apologize to George first. And I'd like to commend Mark on a great shirt. I wish I had a shirt that night. Uh, just some simple things on the LRMP. I think uh, 
Mr. Malone and Mr. Thompson pointed out some interesting things, and maybe they didn't mean to. Uh, first of all, in the current, without modification, which I think a lot of people have agreed to the compromise position, this is the steering committee's position. You would create just by right in Champaign County alone, 17,000 by right lots. Now, I would say that if you can't make money selling 17,000 lots, and if Mr. Malone's group can't make money on 6% of 17,000 lots, then uh, I'm not doing my math right. Second of all, Mark pointed out something very important, and so did Mr. Malone. This best use of the land. Farm ground, again, does not send a kid to school. Farm ground sends money here to the county in property tax. Farm ground doesn't flush a lot of toilets. Farm ground sends money here to the county, to the townships. There's value in that. There's value in the produce, in the food, in the grain that comes from that land. And if we're not making money on that, we're not doing something right. And that's up to the individual landowner. Mark points out. That if you limit, and this has been proven time and time again, if you have some sort of effective, some sort of effective good policy that keeps you from having rampant sprawl, the value of what you do have goes up. And I contend the value of those 17,000 buy right lots, which we've already added another thousand or so to, almost 2,000 with the compromise position, just buy right lots, that the value of those lots will go up which would be welcome news because currently the value of most everything in the county is down. We did it without control. It didn't work. Now perhaps we could try to do it with just a modicum of control. So I urge you to pass the advisory document, the LRMP. Thank you. Is there anybody else on our participating in public participation at this time? We'll declare it closed. Moving on to communications. Mr. Mr. Ms. Anderson. Um, I think probably everybody is aware that this week is Eberfest week. It's been in all of the news. Uh, as a part of that, it ends on Sunday, but the Anti-Stigma uh, Alliance, which the Mental Health Board is a part of, um, has a movie. Uh, at 4.30 at the Virginia Theater called The Soloist. This was uh, in the theaters last year. I saw it. It's a true story about a very uh, talented young man, musical prodigy, who developed schizophrenia. Uh, Jamie Foxx and Robert Downey Jr. star in it. And it's free, uh, open to the public. And there will be music outside prior to the uh, the uh, showing of the film, and then there will be discussion with people who have been involved with the uh, the filming uh, after after the film that they could stay for, and would like to make people aware of that. Mr. Kurtz, thank you. Uh, this is for information only, and I'm not. I don't have the exact date of publication. I was contacted by the Chicago Tribune today. They're going to be doing a cover story in their magazine on one of these Sundays, either this Sunday or next Sunday, concerning Olympia Drive. And they've contacted all the stakeholders and those in effect uh, concerning Olympia Drive and that they're going to be doing this cover story on a Sunday publication, just for your information. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Gladney. I just want to make people aware that this Saturday, the 24th, there's a health and community action fair uh, at the Independent Media Center in Urbana from noon to 5 p.m. Uh, people can go there and learn about local free clinics and health justice projects. Thank you. Ms. Wysocki? Um, I actually have two announcements. Um, one is that at your desk you will find a letter from the Champaign County Farm Bureau, um, which is a restatement of the email that was uh, also used, as, used to communicate. Um, their support of the alternative 4.1.5 and 4.1.6. Um, so just so you don't miss that one. The other is that I believe I mentioned at uh, our last Committee of the Whole meeting 
that um, our local Preservation and Conservation Association um, has awarded Champaign County a Heritage Award uh, for in recognition for the work that was done on the restoration of the clock and bell tower. Uh, last Sunday they had their annual presentation of these awards. Um, this is ours. Oh, nice. Um, now nicely framed and we'll find a prominent spot in the courthouse uh, to uh, display this recognition. Um, they also in their citation included Rustler Construction Company and Gail White of White and Bergignoni um, and we do ha we did have copies uh, for each of them. I delivered Mr. Wessler, uh, Rustler's yesterday and we sent the one to Carbondale for um, our architects. So this is a nice recognition of um, what, eight years of work, um, endless fundraising effort, and, uh, and I think a, a, an edifice that um, s certainly marks um, distinctively Champaign County. Thank you. Mr. Jones. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to point out, I put at everyone's uh, desk tonight, an alternative proposal for elected official salaries, which we will discuss at next month's uh, finance committee. I want to give everybody a chance to kind of be thinking about what proposals they might have or, or some alternatives we could look at. And the only thing I did want to point out, again, is as, as Deb reiterated, uh, we will only be voting on the group one uh, people uh, when we vote next month, the clerk, treasurer, sheriff, and board chair. The group two people, uh, again, it shows that 4%, 4%, and 0, 0. That, the 4%, 4% is what they're currently already going to get, and the 0, 0 is just uh, something we can discuss down the road when we vote on that. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Jones. But I might add, I did not get a copy, but it happens a lot. Thank you. Uh, I have a couple of announcements. One is um, the County Board and the public at large is invited to the Police Officer Memorial Day, which will take place at Friday, May 14th, uh, at the Champaign County Courthouse Plaza. The ceremony that honors all Champaign County and State of Illinois officers who have lost their lives in the line of duty. And this is sponsored by all Champaign County law enforcement agencies. And the time is, official time is 12.15, so try to arrive at 12. And lastly, uh, on May 4th, Tuesday, the same day as our first committee of the whole meeting, is bike to work day, so I invite all of you to bring your bikes and park, you can park them in here. Does that include Harleys? Uh, no, I, I actually inquired about that, no, no, it cannot be a gasoline driven bike. Okay, um, and we're on to approval of the minutes, seek approval of the minutes of March 18, 2010. Moved by Ms. Ammons. Second. Second by Mr. Jones. Discussion? See none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, moving on to committee reports, environment and land use. Ms. Wysocki. Yeah, I, I know I asked uh, the, uh, the board about moving item 7 to the top of the list, but I've since been informed that we have uh, some individuals from Danville who are here for item, the original item 1, and so that they can get back home. I think... Is there any objection to starting out with item 1 first, then move to item 7? We'll go to item See none. 7. Go ahead, Ms. Wysocki. Uh, the Committee of the Whole moved um, the adopt, voted to recommend approval of Resolution 7311, which is to authorize Chris, the Rural Transit, as the selected agency to provide countywide public transportation, and I so move. Second. Thank you, Mr. Betts. I want to point out that uh, a couple days ago, I received a letter from uh, the village of Thomasboro, dated April 14th. You have a hard copy of that at your desk. Discussion. Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. Motion carries. <coughs> now, um, the Committee of the Whole uh, ta, 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 ta. the Committee of the Whole voted to recommend approval uh, of the LM, LRMP uh, by virtue of resolution number 7316. 
And I so move. Second. Second, Second by Mr. McGinty. Discussion? Ms. Wysocki. I would like to amend that motion. Um, and so I'm going off of the yellow sheet that you have at your desk. Um, <clears throat> Uh, this is to replace policy 4.1.5 with the um, with a modified alternative policy 4.1.5, uh, and I so move. Second. Second. Second by Mr. McGinty. Uh, clarification: this, Does this replace the entire 4.15? It replaces item A of. Item A. Okay. Thank you. Uh, item A and N B. Okay. Thank you. Discussion. We have a amendment on the floor. Mr. Smucker. I just want to clarify what, what this amendment, is this the amendment that's been, um, that was uh, reviewed for us in the letter of uh, April 16th? That's correct. Okay. Further discussion. Seeing none, all in favor. Aye. All opposed? No. Motion carries. Back to the main motion. <coughs> Discussion. Seeing none. Roll call. Anybody else want to roll call? Roll call. Anybody else? Sure. Okay. Roll call what it is. Nudo. Yes. <coughs> O'Connor. Not today. <laughs> Richards. Point of order. That's a no. Yeah, absolute clarification, no. Mr. Connor. Thank you. That's an absolute no. <coughs> Richards. Yes. Rosales. Yes. Sapp. No. Schrader. Yes. Smucker. Yes. Wysocki. Yes. Ammons. Yes. Anderson. Yes. Beckett. Yes. Benzel. No. Betts. Yes. Cowart. Yes. Dennitz. No. Gladney. Yes. James. Yes. J. No. Jones. Yes. Knott. Yes. Kurtz. Yes. Langenheim. Yes. McGinty. Yes. Michaels. No. Mosier. Yes. And Weibel. Yes. Motion carries. Back to number two, Ms. Wysocki. Um, before I move on to the next item, I, uh, and while we're st still processing that vote, um, I, I would be remiss if, if uh, I didn't extend some thanks to some, uh, if not individuals, certainly groups of people who made this effort possible. Um, and I'll not do this in any particular order, and I hope this doesn't sound like the Oscars or the Emmys, um, but um, I, really, I really do want to thank the 18 people who served on the steering committee and gave uh, a, an inordinate amount of their time, their energy, and their thoughtfulness to, um, to craft this document. Um, it, it was an extraordinary group of people. They worked so well together. They were, um, they were again, wanting to put forward the best wording they could uh, to certainly telegraph their intentions as to what they were advising the county to do. And I think it paid off. I know some people have been concerned about the length of the document, but um, I, really, I really think their effort and their time commitment was, was extraordinary. I also would be remiss if I did not acknowledge the work of the planners, Susan Cheveria, uh, Andrew Levy, Susan Monte, and John Hall, um, who did, again, more than a yeoman's job in providing materials, of offering guidance, of answering questions, of doing additional research, of, of just trying to be as complete and as thorough as they possibly could. And I also appreciate um, the support that they gave to me 
um, as, uh, not only in my capacity as chair of that steering committee, but also in helping me to be able to communicate um, information and detail to others uh, for whom this was important. Um, and, I, and I dare say, I, I, I have to thank um, not only my own caucus, but also um, the Republican caucus uh, for their support, their willingness to find common ground, to work together in, in fashioning this document and making this approval possible. Thank you. Uh, next item, the Committee of the Whole uh, voted to recommend approval of Resolution 7312, which is to authorize the inclusion of Champaign County in the service area of Foreign Trade Zone Number 114, and I so move. Second. Second by Mr. James. Discussion? See none. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? No. Motion carries. The Committee of the Whole voted to recommend approval of Resolution 7313 uh, to approve the revised agreement regarding provision of recycling and or refurbishing services for the 2010 and 2011 countywide residential electronic collection event. Second by Ms. Colbert. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Committee of the Whole voted to recommend approval of Resolution 7314, which is to approve the revised lease agreement for the 2010-2011 countywide residential electronic collection event. And I so move. Second. Second by Mr. McGinty. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, the Committee of the Whole voted to recommend approval of Resolution 7315 to approve the revised intergovernmental agreement for cost sharing of the 2010-2011 countywide residential electronic collection event. Second. And I so move. A second by Mr. Betts. Apparently he wants to go home early. Uh, discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. And the Committee of the Whole voted to recommend approval of Ordinance Number 861 which is approving zoning case 658-AT-09 to amend the zoning ordinance, and I so move. Uh, Mr. Kirst, was that a second by you? Yes. Let's not try to continue this, please. So second by Mr. Kirst. Discussion? Uh, we need a roll call vote on this. Right, we do. Discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call. Nudo? Yes. O'Connor? No. Richards? Yes. Rosales? Yes. Sap? Yes. Yeah. Schrader? Yes. Smucker? Yes. Wysocki? Yes. Ammons? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Beckett? Yes. Yeah. Benzel? Yes. Betts? Yes. Coart? Yes. Dennitz? Yes. Gladney? Yes. James? Yes. Jay? Yes. Jones? Yes. Knott? Yes. Kurtz? Yes. Langenheim? Yes. McGinty? Yes. Michaels? Yes. Mosier? Yes. Weibel? Yes. Motion carries. That's all from Eli. Thank you, Ms. Wasaki. Finance. Mr. Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Kurtz? Uh, I think also thank you and appreciation has to go to Chair Wasaki for the LRMP. Uh, I watched her work through the steering committee for a year and a half. I watched her work through ELOC when we were um, a smaller group. I watched her work through the uh, committee of the whole, and I must tell you that uh, she deserves our appreciation as well for the effort that she's put in here over the last two and a half years. That's all I have to say, Mr. Chair. Uh, finance, Mr. McGinty. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Committee of the Whole recommended adoption of Resolution Number 7320, Purchases Not Following Purchasing Policy, and I so move. Second. Second by Mr. Beckett. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. And the Committee of the Whole recommended adoption of Resolution Number 7321, Payment of Claims Authorization, and I so move. Second. Second by Mr. Beckett. Discussion? 
Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. All from finance, thank you. Thank you, Mr. McGinty. Policy personal appointments, Mr. Betts. Good evening, Mr. Chair. From uh, the Committee of the Hall of Policy, uh, the adoption of resolution number 7331, approving proclamation designated in the week of May 9th as National Police Week, and I so move. Second. Second by Mr. James, discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, I move adoption of resolution number 7332, approving the proclamation designating the week of May 2nd as National Correction Officer Week, and I so move. Second. Second by Mr. Smucker. A discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Move adoption of resolution number 7322, appointing Mervyn Meyer to the Thomasboro Fire Protection District. Second. Second by Mr. Kurtz. Well, uh, Mr. Becker will be abstaining. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. Motion carries? Abstain. Move adoption of resolution 7323, appointing Michael Tittle. Mr. Chair, we need a reason for Mr. Beckett's abstention. Oh, yeah. Klein, Attorney Klein. Thank you. Uh, would it the same for the next one, too? Yes. Both of these. Both of these, okay. Correct. Uh, I move adoption of resolution 7323, appointing Michael Tittle to the Thomasboro Fire Protection District. Second. Second by Ms. Wysocki. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Motion carries with one abstain. Thank you, Mr. Betts. Moving on to other business. <coughs> Seek approval of the closed session minutes of February 18, 2010, February 18, uh, 2010, March 18, 2010. And two more from March 18, 2010. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Betts, second by Mr. Beckett. All in, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion carries. Is there any new business? We're adjourned.